Welcome back to another Revit video. And in this video, we're going to look at kind of automatic dimensions, automatic dimension strings, really nice stuff. So before we get into it, and it's going to be a pretty nice video, I think, please demolish that like button. It really, really helps me out a lot. It also tells me you might have learned something because I hope that's why you're here, to learn something. Okay, getting into it right now. We're, we've talked about dimensions before. I have dimension videos already, so definitely check those out. This is, I guess you could call it, you know, step two of dimensions or more advanced or whatever. But regardless, it's going to be the closest thing we have to automatic dimensions. You know, and I say it's close because it isn't like do my dimensions on my plan. Like it's not quite that, um, but it's at least one step closer. That's, I guess, what we care about. So if we go to the annotate tab, I bet you're familiar with the tag by category and tag by category of course tags anything by category but if we click tag all we can see that we can literally choose to tag everything here now that's a little more automated than what we're doing but in a sense when it comes to dimensions that's kind of what we're doing we're, we're gonna have some options to look through and then actually place these dimensions and of course put them where we want them but uh, have more automation to it which is kind of the point here so in the annotate tab we have all of our dimensions and the, the main thing to note here is that this sort of automation that we're uh, working with is only with the aligned and i will say that's probably the dimension that i end up using 95 to 99 percent of the time very rarely do i find myself needing really any of these others of course spot and elevations and all that i need that and spot slopes i need those a lot but the align is of the, these actual dimensions the tool that i end up using the most so of course di or whichever you want uh, if you want to click the the button itself you can also find it in the modify tab of course go to modify there's dimension we can drop down and choose all these different dimensions that we saw before in the annotation tab but i'll just click that and then here we are and so of course i'm not trying to show you something that you know is hidden or anything like that but you know we can always draw dimensions here great really easy uh, but where i want to point you to which is where i typically don't think to look happens to be up here in this green bar particularly if we look at this pick so by default the pick option is going to be set to individual reference and so of course we just saw that individually i can select a point to reference and get our dimension easy um, but of course I don't want to do that. I want it to be a little more automated. So here we have a drop down, and it is. Uh, we also have the option of entire walls, which, woo, entire walls. That sounds really interesting. So I want to preface all of this by saying I'm not going to use this part every single time I want to draw a dimension string because a lot of times I need something either very specific or I guess like, let's say something less general than what I'm going to be able to get from this tool. Um, but I will say this is probably the best tool when it comes to dimensioning consistently, especially overall dimensions, like overall exterior wall dimensions, anything like that, exterior or, you know, the outer extents of your model, that kind of conditions. And so it says pick entire wall. So I just pick the whole wall. So I, it literally gets, gives me walls to highlight. So I'm just going to work with this wall uh, for this tutorial. But so I click on the wall and I get my whole dimension like I don't have to select the ends or anything like that so I'm gonna I'm gonna just put this up here and now how did we get this particularly we got that because we are actually looking at wall faces up here again this is this is the default so it's not something you need to worry about necessarily but you do need to worry about it if you want to change it so for example we might be a little more interested not necessarily in wall faces but maybe maybe wall center lines i'd say probably not wall center lines i'd say probably the center of the core or faces of core more likely that but of course it depends on the type of work you're doing if you're doing finish work you're probably doing you know wall faces which is the default or if you're doing you know shell work it might be just faces of core which makes more sense to me as someone who's doing more shell work but regardless it doesn't necessarily matter you're gonna get the same result as in it's going to automatically do the dimension for you it's just where is it dimensioning to and that's really, I mean, this, this again, reinforces everything on walls because assuming you've modeled your wall correctly, your dimensions will show up correctly. But if you have your dimensions of your wall, not necessarily the dimension, but these, the core 
in the incorrect place or you have extra layers in your core that don't make sense then the face of the core would be in the wrong place therefore your dimensions are off so there can be some seemingly catastrophic things that could go wrong if you choose uh, faces or center of core and you don't have your walls built correctly so i guess technically a good fallback is the wall faces just because it's going to i mean obviously you have the uh the depth of the wall, the width of the wall, accounted for already because the walls are built and modeled. But that's just something to be aware of. So I, I'm going to keep this on wall faces just as a default. Um, again, this will work with any of those different options, uh, but that's something to know as well. Something really nice too is that all of those options can be found uh, within these different tools here. The ang angular, the radial, diameter are like these things i can choose whether to actually dimension to as i hover over by default to the wall faces now i'm going to come back to the aligned and show you here if i choose wall faces i'm going to go to this wall and you can see uh, actually individual i can see that it it does snap to the edge here but then i also get like it in e basically each edge of it or each wall face and then of course the center which is just kind of going to happen by default but i can always tab to every piece and every element every layer within the wall now if i put this on faces of core i'm going to get this default snap to be the faces of core which is really great again if you have this model correctly this is really to your advantage so i would highly recommend that you get your walls model correctly and then choose how you want to dimension so with that said let's go back to this and i'll go to wall faces put this to entire wall and we, we just did that already and so basically this is my overall dimension of because I'm going from wall face to wall face. It's prioritizing exterior, so that's, you know, again, it goes back to the modeling the wall. But I am, I really care about the options now because this is gonna give me more options when it comes to automatically placing this dimension. So options, this is awesome. You can see kind of where we're going here. I can select openings, uh, intersecting walls, and intersecting grids. So let's start with openings. So I, most of the time, I'm going to, I guess this applies a lot to residential because I don't necessarily dimension lots of openings this way but when it comes to residential especially you, you typically would just use the center you would dimension to the center and then you in the door schedule you'd pick up the actual width of the door but if you don't want to do the door schedule or a really small project or something uh, you could choose width so let me show you first what centers does and this is going to account for the center of my openings of course I have the the center line built into this dimension string but the nice thing here is that I just clicked the wall once and I got this dimension that goes to the center of this door, the center of that door, and so on. This is really nice. And now, just for comparison's sake, I will change this to widths and we can see the difference. Obviously, it's going to, you know, give me the width of those openings, which is really nice. It doesn't matter the size of the opening. It knows it's an opening because it's, you know, a door or something like that door window or whatever it might be that is, you know, penetrating the wall. It's affecting the wall in some way, which is really good. So I'm going to keep it, keep these, and we'll move further down these dimension options. So again, back to the tool options here, and because I did this already, I don't necessarily need this, but I I might want to do intersecting walls. Now, this is my least favorite of them all, and you'll see why. Whenever I click this, I get every single dimension of a wall that happens to somehow intersect this exterior wall. I mean, you might say, yeah, this is really nice. Uh, and it is nice because it gives you a lot of dimensions, but 90% of the time I'm going to have some sort of, you know, wall schedule or something that is, uh, you know, basically tagging these walls that refer you to somewhere else that is to give the dimension. So I don't have to do this. This is kind of a mess. And ideally, if you have the same type of wall everywhere, which is currently what I'm showing here, I get the same dimension. And so it just, it's a mess. It's not necessary. And plus this is an exterior dimension. If, I mean, if I'm putting this on the exterior, it might work out a little better if, and make more sense if I were to put this inside the wall. But then again, uh, all of this is referenced to this wall. So I, I, again, you can see why I have mixed feelings. I'm going to tag these walls for their dimensions, everything that's going to be referred back to a different schedule. So I don't, I'm not, I don't like that so much. I'm not a big fan of it. Now, I will say I am a big fan of grids and intersecting grids because that's really important. You know, you have to tie everything to grids because I mean, you have to tie the building down to something. And so the nice thing is clicking this, I can see, all right, these are, I mean, I, I get all the grids. Now, typically speaking, I'm not going to do this in that I would just have one of these dimensions tied to a grid line because I don't need all of them. Now, this is helpful, of course, especially you would do this. 
Uh, if you're trying to denote consistency between bays, you know, 30 foot, 30 foot, whatever, that's fine. You would probably do that once, but not everywhere. And after that, it's it's fine. So it, again, this is really helpful, really easy. But the chaotic part is that, is that we could actually put all this together, and I would never do this also. But if we put all this together, we just get a gobbledygook mess of of dimensions. Now, this is is a mess. I would never do this. This would never be on a sheet that I end up issuing. But, you know, for quick dimensions, for all literally every dimension across this wall that I might want, that's a really quick way of doing it. I don't have to come in here and tab every face of the wall or whatever it might be to get this result. And so... I'm a big fan of, of this from a, a tool standpoint, not just a I'm going to document my project now standpoint. And so maybe I would reorganize it this way because of the hierarchy of these dimensions. So, you know, I like this. It, it's really simple. Uh, I, again, I would probably use this from, uh, from the standpoint of I'm going to do overall dimensions on the exterior of my project, whether that's actually exterior or just the outer, outer walls, outer extents of my project, because it, I get it really quickly, and it gives me the information that I need really quickly. So, I don't know. This is kind of up to you whether you want to use it. I hope you did learn something because we we looked at dimensions not just from the standpoint of placing them, but having them kind of automatically placed for you. And so, if you did happen to learn something or you just end up liking the video, please, please demolish that like button. It really, really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all you who have. And so, again, that will do it for this video. We looked at automatic dimensions, automatic in a way. Call it automatic if you want, but regardless, that will do it. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.